Hello, friends. Hello, friends, and welcome to the Shaman's View. I'm Dr. Alberto Violdo, and I want to bring you the perspective of the shaman with this big eclipse that we have happening on Independence Day on July 4th. Lunar eclipse where the gates of hell will be flung open. Exciting time according to many of the legends. Whenever there's an eclipse in the sky, in the west we rush out to see the solar eclipse or like will happen on Sunday evening to look at the moon going dark, the full moon going dark because the earth will be blocking the light from the sun. When this happens among indigenous people, they don't run out to see an eclipse. They run in to light their fires because the light is being obscured by the dark. But before we get to this eclipse and how you may want to go to your house and light a candle and light a fire, because this is happening right on July 4th, Independence Day, the day where we celebrate freedom from slavery and from bondage. And this freedom is now being mirrored in the night sky as we face the lords of Shibalba. The um, Shibalba to the Mayans were, was the gateway and the doorway to the underworld. And this is the time when everything that has been hidden is coming out. All that has been passed off as truth is being revealed to have been a very shaky foundation. We're learning the difference between truth and untruth. And this is a very powerful night. But before we get to that, let me invite you to join me to do a short meditation to step into that healing state that we step into when we reset our fight or flight. And I'm gonna ask you to join me in a breathing practice. Remember, we reset fight or flight on the exhalation, not on the inhalation. The breath is the one way that we can reset our central nervous system, go into parasympathetic functioning, the deep relaxation response that gets us out of fight or flight. And today we know that the world is in fight or flight. Everyone is scared. And when we go into fight or flight, we go into step number three, which is fight, flight, freeze. We become paralyzed. Our immune systems become paralyzed. Our energy gets stuck. Our thinking becomes paralyzed and we are unable to act or to respond creatively. So let's inhale to a count of three, counting softly one, two, three, pausing at the top of the breath, and then exhaling to a count of five, making the exhalation longer than the inhalation, and pausing at the bottom of the breath so we can reset the nervous system. This exercise was actually taught to me by uh, Dr. David Perlmutter the neuroscientist and neurologist. You've read his books, Grain Brain, and he and I co-authored a book, Power Up Your Brain. And he shared this with me, the resetting of fight or flight with your breath, but even more important, pausing at the very top of the breath with the lungs full and at the very bottom with the lungs empty. It's at that time that we're able to break out of the ancient Neanderthal limbic brain, which is the brain of fight or flight and the brain of fear and stress and step into the higher brain and activate that region in the brain known as the singular gyrus. The singular gyrus, which is where the feelings of compassion, of kindness, of generosity, I don't know if they emerge from there, but they activate this region in the brain that seems to create a standing wave where we can step into higher thinking, higher creativity, and higher wisdom. 
So join me as we inhale to a count of three, pause at the top of the breath, and exhale to a count of five. Inhaling to three, one, two, three, pausing, exhaling to five. Pausing at the bottom of the breath, inhaling to three, one, two, three, pausing at the top, exhaling to five, two, three, four, five, pausing at the bottom, and inhaling to three, and pausing at the top of the breath, and exhaling to five. Passing at the top, exhaling two, three, four, five, passing at the bottom, inhaling to three, one, two, three, passing at the top, exhaling to five, two, three, four, five, passing at the bottom. One, two, three, pausing at the top of the breath, exhaling to five, two, three, four, five, and inhaling deeply, and exhaling. And I remember years ago, we were with one of our groups in southern Peru in the Nazca Lines, and these giant markings of the desert floor, what some people believe were landing fields for our extraterrestrial cousins. But they were markings made by the ancient desert people, giant spirals and triangles and rectangles that go on for kilometers. And we were doing work with one of the shamans in the spiral, in the great spiral in Nazca when we happen to be in a lunar eclipse, unbeknown to us. The, the moon began to disappear, being eclipsed by the earth. The earth was coming in between the sun and the moon. And all of the shamans put their ponchos over their head and gathered around the fire, small fire that we had burning. And I asked them, don't you want to come and see the eclipse? They said, we can feel it. We don't need to see it. The grandmother, the moon, is being covered in darkness by the mother, by the earth. The mother and the grandmother are now being in the dark, in their place of the dark creative womb where everything emerges from. But before that process of emergence can happen, all of the demons are let loose. And I said, what demons? What are you talking about? He said, all of the unconscious parts of humanity, all of those things that we've kept hidden in the shadows. The shadows come out and they dance. And when you're centered in your light, the dance of the shadows is exquisitely beautiful. When you're caught in the shadow dance, you're in the floor, you don't like the music, and you're being spun by your own dark side, and it's showing up in people around you or in situations that are challenging or negative for you, it is absolutely no fun. This is the time for us to come to our inner deepest light because we cannot rely on the outer light during these moments. The light of the sun is not striking the mother or the grandmother. So I invite you during this time it's Sunday evening, midnight Eastern time in the United States, when this lunar eclipse will happen, to light a candle. 
and to welcome your own shadows. Know that they're going to be called forth. Interesting that this is happening during Independence Day, July 4th in the United States, the time that the shadow is going to be accentuated by these forces in the heavens and in the sky. And if you can maintain that position of the witness, of the observer, you can appreciate the shadow dance. I remember being in Bali and watching a shadow puppet theater where the puppeteers behind the sheet, the screen with a candle behind them and using his hands and the different puppets reenacts this dance of the dark. This is exactly what's happening now. If we remember that even that dance is choreographed by the light of the candle. So I take it as an invitation to come into the place of your own light. We're living in a time when the shadows have been let out of the unconscious. The shamans speak about it as the gates of hell have been flung open. All of the demons are out there walking among us and we recognize them, we see them. We know that we're dealing with the pent up hostility and anger and inequality and lack of social justice, the movements, the Black Lives Matter, the social unrest that's happening around the world is showing us that we need to make a shift and we need to make a shift internally and societally and politically, but it happens inside. If it's only an external shift that we're making, then it's like the French Revolution where they killed off all the nobles and within 10 years, the new ruling class, the new elite was even worse than the existing one than the royalty that had all of their heads chopped off. Unless we make that journey to befriend the shadow, to turn our demons into allies, to find the resourcefulness in the hidden parts of ourselves, to discover the treasures that lie in our own unhealed parts, then it'll keep showing up for us in the outer world. During this time of deep darkness, the shamans had covered their heads. They were gathered around the fire. And I asked them, what are you doing? And they said, we are in attendance to a birth. And I said, the birth of what? It's the birth of a new time that we all pray for. In the Andes, we call it the Pachacuti, the return of the ancient medicine, the medicine that was devastated by the conquistadors the conquistadors who came and imposed a masculine theology upon the indigenous people that enslaved them, that, um, take, that made right, the kings and queens and shamans and, and, and scholars go and work in the field as peasants and that installed child molesters as the teachers of religion and ignorant fools as, as, the, uh, as the Spanish emperors and captains. So they attend to the birth of the wisdom coming back from the depths of the shadow, from the lower world where it has been kept in safety, in these underground temples, in the, in the places that the mother could protect the ancient wisdom teachings directly. And this is for the indigenous people, the return of the ancient wisdom and the shedding of that yoke of the masculine that was imposed on the traditional peoples. I remember a story from the conquest where the conquistador and the priest came and met with the Inca and the priest gave the Inca the Bible and he said this is the word of God and the Inca who was a medicine person took the book and put it to his ear so he could hear the word of God and he listened and he listened and after a few moments he threw the book down on the ground and he said what kind of God is this that does not speak what kind of mute God is this when did your God last speak to you? He asked the priest. And he said, oh, 1,500 years ago. And then the priest said, when, when did your God last speak to you? 
And the Inca said, this morning at breakfast, they still had an active communion with the divine. The divine had not become deified, anthropomorphized, put into human form and elevated to a distant God that had become separate from the creation. And during these times of the return of the shadow of the dark, it's also the time of the great renewal. It's a time when we can return back to our direct communion when we can embrace the deep, dark feminine that is mysterious and that holds the greatest treasures as well as exposing to us those sides that we need to heal deeply. It shakes us from our comfort place. It takes us out of our routine. And this is happening Sunday evening. Don't miss it. It's going to be extraordinary. But I invite you to light a candle. When Sunday evening, when the sun sets, Light a candle so it can reflect your own inner light. As this time in which the grandmother is being eclipsed by the mother, this is a time of the great shift in the feminine. It's happening Sunday evening at your local time. Show up for it, light your fire, and welcome the return of an ancient medicine, which is not going to be the ancient form of the great medicine of the shamanic medicine of the sacred feminine wisdom is not going to be the old form. It's going to be a new form that is emerging right now as this great shadow dance is happening in the planet. When we look at the story of the Greeks, we find that time in which the ancient feminine was replaced with the new feminine. And in the stories of the Greek gods, I love the story of how Aphrodite. Aphrodite is the return of the feminine after a long time of the rule by the male titans, the male gods. And Aphrodite is born out of the sea foam. But the sea foam was created when Cronus, who's one of the titans, when Cronus's testicles were cut off and they struck the waters and out of the sea foam. Venus, Aphrodite, you see the images of Aphrodite emerging in a shell out of the sea foam. And it's telling us that this reemergence of the ancient feminine wisdom is going to be painful. It's going to be painful. And it promises tremendous possibilities. I invite you to show up on Sunday evening with your candle, with your inner light, and to take this opportunity. In, among the Mayans, the underworld was called Shibalba, and the doors to Shibalba were in the earth. For the Mayans, they were in some of the cenotes, the great pools that we find in the Yucatan, and, um, but also in the heavens, not only in the physical earth, um, but also in the heavens, in this dark place in the heavens that came into perfect alignment with the earth in 2012 that marked the great shift, the tipping point that would bring us into this place of renewal when the lords of Shibalba, the lords that were in charge of testing us to see if we were up for this great quantum leap would be set loose. And since then, and even actually before then, all of us have been tested tremendously and deeply and as we meet these tests successfully, we become the hero. We stop being victims in our own path and we embark on that hero's quest. We step into the place of the hero and we do so heroically and with the willingness to look at ourselves in our totality. And once we look and embrace ourselves in our totality, then we can see with clarity in the world then the shaman's wisdom and the shaman's vision is awakened. And I refer to wisdom in particularly because in the ancient feminine shamanic teachings, there's a differentiation between information and wisdom. Information, information is knowing that water is H2O and wisdom is being able to make it rain. Information is having a diagnosis and wisdom is being able to heal. 
So let's step into wisdom. I invite you to light your candle. Bring your candle Sunday at sunset and begin by placing a small stick into the fire to release that which you need to release, that which obscures your vision, that which clouds your sight. Put that in the fire so that by bearing witness to these changes that are happening, to the shadow dance that is happening around us, we can become part of that process of midwifery, of birthing a new time, a new human into being a human that will again embrace that feminine wisdom of the ancients, that lives in right relationship with the earth and with each other and with beauty. Thank you for joining me and I will see you Sunday evening by the fire as we turn back to our inner light.